Hi, this is Nick Haraz of Creative 111 here to bring you a very exciting tutorial on working with Mocha VR for 360 footage to perform tracking techniques inside of Adobe Premiere Pro. In this particular movie, we're going to carry out inserting an object into our equirectangular 360 space, most noticeably that Star Wars PNG file you see against the graffiti wall from Toronto, Ontario. That's is where I come from. And we're going to insert that into the scene and make sure that it's properly obscured. In order to do that, because the footage is moving, we can't perform this task in Premiere Pro because the footage is so distorted and equirectangular. So I'm here in my Premiere Pro timeline. And if you're following along, I'm in my effects workspace, which is why my window setup is just like this. Now, what I'd like to do is insert the graphic that's currently on my V1 track into the scene. And specifically, it's not going to be right here in the center of the echo rectangular footage that I have loaded up here in the program monitor. So if I actually go into my VR video display, and then hover around my scene. I want to insert the graphic right here, as you saw in the intro video. In order to do this, we'd either have to go to After Effects and potentially spend a lot of time uh, making sure that we're in this particular frame or shot with a pre-composition and then insert the graphic. And it's beyond the tracking capabilities of what's inside Premiere Pro. So why not do this with Mocha VR and see how easy it is to do directly from your Premiere Pro timeline. So in order to accomplish this, I'm actually gonna press Shift 7, which is gonna bring me to my effects tab in my workspace and just do a simple search for Mocha VR. And you'll see here under video effects, under Mocha by Imagineer Systems, I'm able to grab Mocha VR and apply it to the clip. In order to see how it's been applied, I can press Shift 5 to bring up my effect controls. And there's a button here that screams, click me, which will launch Mocha VR directly from the Premiere Pro timeline. Draw your attention down here. You can see that you have a timeline inside Mocha VR, very similar to Premiere Pro, and a really handy 360 button, which will allow us to navigate around our scene. In order to do this, we really wanna select our hand tool. So you can hold down X temporarily and then move around the scene or select the hand tool and then navigate to essentially where we want to insert our graphic, which happens to be on this wall right here. And the best part about it is I don't need to create a pre-comp, I don't need to switch views, I can do this all inside of Mocha. Now, what I need to do is identify a plane, and that plane happens to be this wall right here. In order to do that, I'm gonna select my X-spline tool at the very top and create a shape for the wall. So I'm just gonna click, click again, click one more time, and just over here to the side while double clicking to close my shape. I'll then press Control A, which will select all the points and I'll drag outward to make sure that they're nice and stiff. I could drag inward to make them more curved, but I really want them to be nice and stiff. This is a great way to identify the plane of the wall. I could just make sure that I'm not too close to the edges here. I do wanna be on this wall in particular, so I can always, of course, drag and adjust my points. Now, because I've chosen a semi-small area in my 360 view. You can see that uh, Mocha is going to use a lot of pixels in order to track uh, in this particular scene. As well as because I'm in a 360 mode, just keep in mind it's tracking everything, including perspective. And there is quite a bit of motion in the shot, as you saw earlier. So it is a lot of large motion. So all these settings down here, the presets or the default settings are a great place to start. Notice that when I made the shape, a layer was created over here at the side, and I'm just gonna rename that layer to be wall track. And I'll make sure that I give this label a uh, layer a different color, I'll give it a green. And if I wanna update the outline here of the shape, keep in mind this bounding box, I can click here and give it a nice colorful outline. So I will give that a green color just to show you that it will update there, right there on the screen. And now we're just ready to track this forward. So I'm going to, with that wall track layer selected, track this forward and see how this goes. And I'll join you back after the track is complete. Now that I can see that this has done a great job tracking, what I'm gonna do is actually just move the playhead all the way throughout so you can see here that it has done a great job tracking that wall. Now, what I want to do is set it up so that this graphic, that Star Wars graphic you saw at the beginning, is going to be inserted properly. So I want to turn on two things. One is I want to turn on, first of all, my planar grid, followed by the shape here, which is going to be my surface planar. In order to drag this around a little bit better, I'm temporarily going to turn off this 
spline tangents tool right here. And that's just gonna allow me to easily start to drag one of my surface tool points. And you can see how the grid adjusts to show you how this graphic is gonna be inserted. So I'm just gonna set this up just right and maybe just drag these a little bit downward based on the size of the Star Wars shape. And I do want this to be slightly obscured or integrated in the scene. So that's looking pretty good. Now that's set up, I can actually turn off these tools and turn back on the spline tangents. And right here underneath the wall track, you can see here that there's a bunch of layer properties, including one to insert clip. Just to do a quick test, I'm going to import a clip from my system, choose that, which happens to be the Star Wars graphic. And then I'm gonna to choose to open that there and import it into Mocha VR. And the best part about this is now we can see how this is looking in the scene. Obviously it's in front of the recycling bin, but we're just gonna take care of that in a little bit. I'm gonna just close down Mocha VR and choose to save my changes because I will be coming back in here. And the first thing we're gonna do is actually duplicate this layer. So if you Alt Option click this layer and then just drag upwards, I'm gonna release my mouse followed by the Alt Option key. And here under Mocha VR, I'm gonna make a selection. So in my effect controls, I'm going to module renders. And right now I wanna to choose to render out one of the modules in Mocha, which happens to be the insert module. But I want it to essentially reference a track that's inside Premiere Pro. So I'm gonna choose the insert layer to be video one, and then make sure that insert cutout is selected. And we can't see anything, so I'm gonna go just drag around here, as you can see in the Equilectangular view, that updates right away. And if I go here into my 360 mode and start to navigate around my scene, so just to show you this layer is by itself, if I turn off the video two track and we focus on video three, you can see here that I've got my graphic inserted on its own track. I wanna integrate this better in the scene. It's way too vibrant, and I want it to kinda of look like it's part of the background wall. In order to do that, I'm actually gonna go over to my color workspace, which will bring up my Lumetri color panel over here to the side. Inside this panel, I'm gonna just choose a couple things. I'm gonna go over here and just bring down the exposure of this clip ever so much to about negative 0.8. I'll also play around with bringing down the shadows and maybe bringing down the blacks. If I wanted to, I could play with the whites and highlights, but I think they look okay. I'm gonna close the basic correction tab and then just go to my creative tab. And one great thing is they come with a bunch of creative looks meant to mimic certain film stocks. If I start to click on here, I get a preview of how this would look if it was applied to the overall clip, but I'm thinking that the Fuji internal look looks pretty good. And as long as this clip is selected, I can double click that and it's applied to the clip. If I wanted to, I could increase its intensity or bring it down so it integrates a little bit better with the clip itself. Another thing I'd like to do is really play with faded film just to make this actually a little bit more faded. And then also play with the vibrance as well as the saturation, just bring it down a bit more so it's integrated into the scene. As a final step, now new, specifically in Premiere Pro 2018, if I press Shift 7, I can head over to my Effects tab and just do a search for VR Blur. If I select the VR Blur and I'll just apply it to that clip, you'll notice inside my effect controls, you can press Shift 5 in order to reveal those. I can hide my Mocha controls and the Lumetri color controls. I can add a two pixel blurriness to my image and now it's just feeling a little bit more like it's part of the shot. Now that this is done, it's really time to focus on obscuring this. Now in order to do that, I'm going to Option Alt, click to control click and make a, another copy of the clip. And I don't have to do this. I just wanna have a separate layer for my recycling bin, a separate layer for the graphic, and then a separate layer here for the background. If I select this clip, there's a few things that I need to do. I really don't want there to be a blur on this or any type of color correction. And under the Mocha VR effect, I don't want it to be rendering out anything. So I'll just click on the render button and everything will disappear. So now we can focus on actually cutting out this recycling bin so it's on top of my graphic. And to do that, we gotta go back into Mocha. So let me just click on this button. Now to focus on the rotoscoping, I'm gonna basically go back to my original wall track and I want to choose to make sure that the insert clip is set to none. I'm also going to 
lock this layer, the wall track, and make sure that no tracking takes place on it. So I'm going to create a new layer altogether where we can track the recycling bin. Now that this is done, I'm going to head over to my X-Blind tool that we've used earlier and try to draw a rough shape around the top of the recycling bin, specifically the part that is, of course, obscuring the legs of the Star Wars logo. I'm just going to double click to close it. Control A to select all the points and maybe drag them inward. Okay. So now that this rough track is set up around the recycling shape, I just want to bring you attention up here to the show layer mats. And you'll see if I turn it on, what it's doing is it's actually going to create a mask specifically with this information based on where it is in the layer controls. So I'm going to actually turn this off. And let's just get in the habit of naming this new layer to Recycling Bin. I'll make sure that I give it a color. I will give it a purple color in this particular case. And just to give it a different outline versus the green outline that you see here, I'm going to change it from a red to a yellow and then just choose OK so you can see the two differences of the uh, shapes that are being tracked. Now, just taking a brief look at what's being selected, the 90% minimum pixels used, as well as the motion that's being used to track, perspective and large motion, I'm really ready to move forward. So I'm going to just click on the Track Forward button and join you when this track is complete. So the tracking is complete, and if I go through this, we can see that it's done a pretty good job at following the points along the screen. However, it's not perfect towards the end. Inside of Premiere Pro, if you were to adjust, if you were to adjust a track because it's written on a series of keyframes, what happens is you'd have to adjust every single one of the keyframes in order to adjust your track or start over again. Great part about Mocha is if I select a point right now and then just sort of drag it across my shape, it makes this adjustment on this particular frame. You can see that green keyframe that's been applied. It's then going to interpolate the information between the track and the first and this keyframe, which makes for a really fluid workflow. And again, I can actually go to the very end here. Um, I can actually even add points to my shape after the fact, or of course use my hand tool to drag over here and make some final adjustments on the point with the default selection tool. So it makes for a really flexible workflow, especially if we're working here with our mask. And now that this is done and the shape is made, we can of course bring this data specifically into Premiere Pro and see how the track holds up. With my layer selected, the recycling bin, I'm going to go here to export shape data and the format that we want is the Adobe Premiere Pro shape data, which it sees from the selected layer. We're going to copy this to the clipboard. And once we're done, we'll shut down Mocha and I'll press save once I've done that. Now here on the above layer, what I want to do is specifically target a specific default or fixed based effect inside of Premiere Pro. So with my layer selected, and the effect control showing, I want to target opacity. You'll see here that with all effects in Premiere Pro, you do have the ability to add masks. We're essentially going to copy the data from Mocha onto this effect by right-clicking the opacity parameter and choosing paste. What I want to do is just draw your attention here to the side where you see you have a series of keyframes. And while it won't show in this VR mode uh, ever so clearly, if I hop out of it, right, and we see here that there's actually two shapes. There's a reason for that. And specifically, if I go to the beginning of the clip, I always want to draw your attention here that on this echo rectangular clip, as soon as this frame updates, you'll see the recycling bin is on both sides of the frame. It's cut up. And if I select the mask, here's the one side, and here's the mask on the other side. And if I sort of move my playhead throughout, see that that mask does indeed track the shape. Awesome. So after this fact of showing the mask, keep in mind you have all of Premiere Pro's parameters for adjusting or playing around with it. So of course, if I go back in VR mode, this is what the viewer's looking at. And it's actually behind where I've inserted this logo and actually added a layer in front to obscure it. So I got this all done 
inside of Premiere Pro with the help of Mocha VR without the need to create pre-comps or actually go into After Effects. And that's how seamless your workflow can be for these challenging 360 situations where you need to track with the help of Premiere Pro as well as Mocha VR. I'm Nick Haraz from Creative 111. Thanks for watching. And to learn more about Mocha VR and tools for 360 video, visit BorisFX.com.